Hello there, everybody. So, Button and Dragon Iron, welcome back to Uminako. Now, there was this thing that I, a little somebody told me about that I need to try out, and that is with Furudo Erika. What would happen if I executed her? Well, let's see. Oh! Fell from a pleasure bow and currently missing. Due to the Rokinjima explosion accident that occurred shortly after, her accident went completely forgotten. Her family says that she might have drifted to Rokinjima and gotten involved in that accident, but no evidence suggesting that she was ever on the island could be found. Foragers who know of this accident often theorize that she drifted onto Rokinjima and add her in as part of the illusion of the witch. Oh! That's neat. Alright, execute. His corpse is finally- yeah, that- Anyway, <laughs> let's actually continue where we left off. Okay, that's- that's pretty neat, honestly. Didn't know that. That's a neat little thing. And now, in the last episode, we got to see a little bit of Beatrice and Kenzo development. Also, I still kind of find it funny that Kenzo's nickname to, for Beatrice, Biche, just literally sounds like he's calling her a bitch. <laughs> uh, that just, that's just kind of funny to me. Also, we finally figured out where the gold came from! イタリア人たちはこの黄金のことを本土へ報告しないことを望んでいます。わが国に横領されたくないからであろうな。Well, <笑> yeah, it's not ours. It's not your guys's, so. 彼はなんと日本が黄金を横領するのを恐れているから報告されたくないのだろうと言っている。勝意はむしろ イタリア本国に知られることを恐れているわ。What?私たちにとって今の祖国は連合国の傀儡政権。彼らに知られれば黄金は返還することになる。Oh。しかしそれは私たちの敵に黄金を渡すようなもの。Oh。They had come all this way to make sure that the gold didn't fall into enemy hands. They needed to hide this gold from the puppet government until their homeland could be truly restored. ウシロミア、イタリア人たちに提案せよ。我々は協力を申し出たいとな。協力とはイタリア人たちの言い分はこうであろう。彼らはその黄金を祖国に知られることなく隠したいわけだ。しかし、この島から運び出そうとすれば
Still, it's hard to imagine any other option for them. It is kind of a tough decision. The final order given to them by their fallen homeland was to hide the gold. However, by now there was no way for that order to be carried out successfully. If the mainland or their own homeland found out, the gold would probably be confiscated by the wrong people, from their point of view. If they really wanted to carry out their homeland's orders faithfully, Lieutenant Yamamoto's proposal was extremely reasonable. Though the lieutenant couldn't understand their words, it seemed he realized how divided they were. <laughs> あの、この島の地下を横断しているこの島の地下に黄金を隠して埋めれば誰にも発見できないと言ってる現実的な申し出だと議論してるわでも日本人の手を借りるのに抵抗を感じてるみたい議論が難航しているようです <笑>議論の余地などあるのかイタリア人我々の協力なくばあの黄金は隠せんぞまさかいつまでも波打ち際に積み上げておくわけにもいくまい<笑> kind of cocky there, Yamamoto アンジェロ少尉は黄金のことを知る人間を最小で抑えたいみたい uh, 18 sounds like a pretty good number, or maybe 17, preferably. 日本人は信用できないけど、山本注意の申し出が今は最善と見てるみたいよ。でも、いぶかしがってるわ。He has damn good reason. 何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何
後ろ見てもイタリア人たちの感触はどう彼らも黄金がこれ以上の人目につくことを望んでいないようですしかし取り分に異論があるようです少尉は1割ならば検討できると言ってるわ Fair enough. I mean, it's ten tons of gold. You. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not the kind of guy to say the. I'm not very smart when it comes to the value of gold, honestly. But 10% of 10. Well, you know, basically one ton of freaking gold. I. I suddenly need to look up the value of this. But I think you'd be pretty much set for life and you'd be able to. Help out pretty much any member of your family with that large amount of money. Yamamoto Chui, so they did not talk Sinai that Otomo, it did it. Oh, yeah. Usiromia, Italia, Gino, Hinjua, Icani. Ichuari, can't all sort of. This time it was Lieutenant Yamamoto who slammed down on the desk, but the Italians didn't flinch either. An incredible tension filled the small room. However, despite his violent outburst a second ago, Lieutenant Yamamoto's expression still looked smug and in control. He was probably confident that he now had the initiative. Forty percent for the Japanese, sixty percent for the Italians. The lieutenant made it sound like he was willing to stand firm on that, but in truth, those ne these negotiations were not being made on an equal footing. If the Italians just wanted the gold for themselves, there wouldn't have been much of a problem. But what if? What if they really were true patriots and decided that they would return the gold, even to the defeated puppet government of their homeland, for the purpose of reconstruction? If so, they would probably report the existence of the gold to the Italian embassy. Eventually, the Italian government would petition to the Allied nations for the retrieval of their gold. It probably wouldn't all make it back to Italy, but it would, could, might be used effectively to repair and rebuild the battered towns. Right. If that happened, Lieutenant Yamamoto and his friends would only be able to sneak out a few ingots at most. He was greedily planning to make this his own treasure island, so that he and his subordinates could have an enormous fortune all to themselves. More like he actually just wanted me as money for himself, the greedy bastard. If he wanted those ambitions to bear out, the Italians would have to conceal the presence of the gold. しかし疑問だアンジェロ少尉が誰にも黄金を渡したくないなら沈みゆく潜水艦に任せて沈めればよかったはずどうして荷上げを考えたくはないけれど命令が遂行不能になった時点で少尉はこの黄金を横領することを考え始めたのかも、うん、彼は今歌手官たちに軍事祖国に家族が待つ一個人としての意見を聞きたいと言っているわ堅物の歌手官たちは激高してる The discussion between the Italians was becoming fierce and emotional Although their homeland had fallen they had all come this way in accordance with its orders They had probably been given this mission because they were particularly faithful and duty minded troops It seemed they couldn't just agree to a foreigner's proposal to embezzle and sp split up the gold. Holy shit, it is storming outside. Ensign Angelo looked like he was doing all he could to calm the unexpectedly fervent rage of his subordinates. Looks like the gold is blinding them too. It seems no one can sort out their own personal feelings in the way they want to be perceived. <laughs> ガンガエル時間が欲しいと言ってるわ。私はあなたと話せたから気が紛れて良かったけれど、他の人たちはそうじゃないの。とても長い後悔の果てに大勢の仲間を失って極限状態でここにいるわ。唯一の心の拠り
明日の正午だそうだ周囲ねまるで脅迫だ It's not like he's trying to threaten them. He is threatening them. So, you are. They know he can't kick to it. Tell you. Can't you? Tabu. Nanko Sura. So, you see, you are. Yamawake mo Ariel to Kangai de Rumita. I don't know. Kaskan ya Hoka no Nakama Tachua. Tabu, Hanta Sura. Naturally. Mina. Kono Kyoko Made no Kokai. That thunder picked up on the mine. Shit. Chewy no most ever got to work. Got to work. Them. Don't say all go a dark and a tenny water. Nanny mono corona in a la. Semete ingot on a ipon that's them. He so can you much cairo to you show you even me. Don't you shall move this order. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course they would. オーゴンをその yeah, they're just being screwed over, honestly. Ingotona Oh. The Italians were gathered in a cramped room, arguing fiercely. すら抜くとはどういうことかこの島に黄金を隠せということか東洋人たちの申し出を受けるということか東洋人たちは信用できまとくにあの山本という男いやだ、ガイズアンアソー断じて油断できません黄金を逃げして日本人たちに見られたの
残りは軍属の作業員風情です不安部の人数は日本人が上ですが実質兵力ではこちらが優位です日本人を殺せば迎えの船が来た時それをどう説明するごまかしようがないぞ死体さえ見つからなければどうとでもごまかせますああ勝利この基地を制圧するのは容易です山本以下主要な兵士数人を殺してみせればあっさりと作業員たちは降伏するでしょう彼らに黄金を運ばせ地中に埋めましょうもちろん彼らの口は永遠に塞ぎますがああ、うん、日本人たちを皆殺しにするということか殺しましょう全員殺せば黄金のことは誰にも知られずに済むのです Well, we know Kenzo's gonna survive out of this, but Jesus Christ, man! At that moment, the door which had supposedly been locked opened slightly, and a metal object was thrown in. Granada! As the yell rang out, the table was kicked over to be used as a shield, and they all dropped to the floor. Oh my god! However, in this cramped room, it probably wouldn't do them any good. The Italians were all prepared for death. <laughs> Fortunately, the shoddy grenade was a dud. The door was slammed open and three Japanese soldiers wielding pistols jumped in. This is what gold does to people! But don't kill Will! Oh shit, they killed Will. In the small room, no matter who shot where, it was bound to hit someone. The exchange of bullets instantly caused a rain of blood with casualties on both sides. The three who had jumped in were covered with bullet holes and fell over, moaning and thrashing. The grenade was still rolling about on the floor. It had been a surprise attack. Lieutenant Yamamoto had probably judged that the negotiations would not go his way and decided to make the first move. Well, fuck you, Yamamoto! You should die! Or else, maybe he had been planning from the beginning to put them in a position where they would be gathered in one place to discuss his offer. Rokunjima was their island. If they killed all the Italians, then not half, but all of the gold would go to the Japanese. There was a chance the grenade might go off late. The Italians rushed out into the corridor. They heard gunfire from down the hallway. It was coming from the direction of the submarine dock. Clearly, the troops guarding the pile of gold were being attacked. Kill Yamamoto. As soon as okay. As soon as I heard the sound of repeated gunfire, I knew. I knew that something which had been smoldering since the time the gold was unloaded had finally burst. When looking at the gold, the eyes of our soldiers hadn't been normal. Yes, those eyes had been entranced by demons. The Italians had been pushed to the limits by the heavy burden they bore. Who wouldn't have snapped after being trapped in a distant island where you can't understand the language or the writing? Thinking I had to do something, I ran towards the sound of gunfire. Looking back on it, that was an extremely stupid thing to do. That sound meant that there were people shooting at each other. People killing each other. And yet, unarmed as I was, I dashed towards the sound as though I was trying to mediate some schoolyard fight. Didn't take long before I learned how foolish and naive such a thing was in the heat of battle. Hiraoka <laughs> Hazel! Warrant Officer Hiraoka was laying face down, his entire body drenched in blood. Judging by the trail of blood behind him, it was clear that he had somehow managed to crawl here from a different room before dying. No, he was still twitching. He might not be dead yet, but on this island without a doctor. No. Even if we had a doctor, how could anyone possibly save a man who had been shot this many times in the chest? When I looked into the room he must have crawled out of, 
I saw two more bloodstained Japanese corpses. <laughs> I fell backwards, pathetically on my butt, my mouth hanging open in shock. Come to think of it, that was the first time I had ever faced death in my life. The entire world was at war. Even though millions were dying both east and west, this is the first time I met with a person's death directly. Ridiculous. Didn't I join the army hoping to die? Didn't I whine about not being sent to the front lines? Yeah, so rejoice, Kinzo. Isn't this the death you were looking for? Why not spread your hands and yell out loud? Come for me, magnificent death! Someone came running towards me. It was a colleague of mine, a Japanese man. Tajimaku. <laughs> he dashed towards me, pale face and out of breath. His face seemed horribly contorted with terror. Mine probably looked the same. Tajimaku! What <laughs> Someone yelled in Italian at the same time Tajimakun let out a scream. Then he grabbed onto me as he fell to the floor. A red stain was spreading across his back before my eyes. As he spat bubbles of blood. He said that one word, die. But the shock of seeing someone die right in front of me did not freeze my heart. At a fundamental level, all living things aren't concerned with the detailed deaths of others. The one thing that matters is whether they themselves die or not. It was the barrel of the gun the Italian soldier was pointing that froze my heart. Tajimakun's back burst once more as he leaned against me. Flesh tore, blood splattered. The warm splash of it covered my face. Was the Italian still trying to finish him off even though he had stopped moving for good? How foolish I'd been. Can I still not understand the scene in front of me? Rejoice, Kinzo! Now you'll finally get what you've wanted all this time! The Italian hadn't fired to finish off Tajimakun. He'd been aiming at the man Tajimakun and had fallen on me. On me, Yoshida Miyakinzo. <laughs> I pushed his corpse aside, scrabbled against the floor, and dashed away, tumbling over myself. My hands had pushed off against the floor hard to tear off the ring finger fingernail on my left hand. Oh god! When faced with death, humans truly can resist all with all they've got. I tumbled over and over as I ran, scraping up parts of my body. It was painful, hot, but that didn't matter at all. I heard the yelling in Italian coming from behind me over and over again. It felt like they were running, chasing after me. I didn't want to look back, so I kept on running and running as though the Italians were right behind me. This is death. Didn't you want to die? No, I don't want to die. Why? Didn't I want to die so badly? But now I know. I know how wonderful it is to be alive. She taught me. Nietzsche did. I can only be free when I talk with her. No! By talking with her, I was finally alive for the first time. I was born! I want to live. I want to live. I want to live. I want to live! I don't want to die. I want to live and see her right now. If I don't see her, I'll die. I'll be killed. Stay cool, Kinzo. She might be killed too. If you live and she dies, you might as well be dead. Before I knew it, my face was covered in tears, snuck and drool. When I stumbled into something and fell, I was finally able to come to my senses a little. I could still hear intermittent gunfire. The gunfire was still going on, and it had spread throughout the entire base. DJ, are you okay? I'll find her and take her to a safe place. The lieutenant will probably kill all the Italians to steal the gold. BJ probably won't be an exception. Beat. <gasps> Beat. I lived for the first time after meeting you. I was born. So if you die, I'll die again. I could feel every cell in my body being reborn. 
Not as Ushida Mi Akinzo, but as a completely different Kinzo. Of course. I was terrified that I might really be shot if I went back. But I didn't want to die anymore. To truly die. So, I was able to overcome my fear. <laughs> ビーチ。一体何が起こってるの？この騒ぎは何？君が知らなくていい。そこにじっと隠れてろ。東方が呼びかけるまで出てくるんじゃない。イタリア人の声が聞こえた。そこにいるぞ。くそ、誰と応用
There was no sign or trace of any living person. Maybe all the people in this base had died. The Japanese struck first, but at that time we were also talking about killing them. They simply made the first move as military men. So perhaps we should be grateful to them. By the time the boat came to take us away, there would have been no honor for us. We would have been mere failures in our mission, unfit to face our dead comrades. Perhaps dying here in the Far East alongside my gun is a more fitting end for a soldier. I noticed the sound of shuffling feet coming from around the corner and strained to hear. Is someone seriously wounded and dragging their feet? Noticing them before they notice me greatly helps my chances. At this stage, there is no point in taking prisoners. We must dispose of all the Japanese. I'll dash around the corner, quickly check to see who they are, and shoot if it's a Japanese person. Nothing more. I've been hiding my footsteps the whole time. They probably don't know I'm here. Once the shuffling footsteps had come close enough, Angelo leaned around the corner and raised his gun. The voice that reached him spoke Italian. Damn it! The blood poured from Angelo's chest. His gun fell to the floor, then his knees, and then the rest of his body crumbled and stopped moving. Yamamoto's accuracy with the gun wasn't particularly stellar. However, Angelo had waited until they were fairly close before jumping out, so Yamamoto had made the shot. He had managed to hit, even with the short barreled handgun in one hand and a woman as a hostage in the other. <laughs> it was such an obvious lie that even he wore a bitter smile. The Italians were spies working for the enemy, and they all died along with the garrison in a gunfight. Since this was the story Yamamoto wanted to tell, he couldn't afford to have any Italian survivors. By this point, he wouldn't be able to keep the entire pile of gold, but he should be able to grab as many as he could carry. Even that would be worth a huge amount of money. Beatrice suddenly swung her head, smashing Yamamoto's nose hard. Good job! <laughs> she almost managed to escape. However, Yamamoto quickly grabbed her leg and tripped her. She fell onto her back, and Yamamoto mercilessly stomped his foot down on her stomach and pointed his gun at her. <laughs> Kinzo had jumped out from the shadows. He was holding a gun he had stolen from one of the corpses. Hmm? <laughs> Yamamoto didn't know that the grenade had been a dud. The surprise attack, which he had been certain would work, had failed, so he decided that Kenzo must have tipped them off. Kenzo, shoot him! <laughs> Yamamoto grabbed his heel into Beatrice's. Fucking kill him! Yamamoto, 
He's pointing a gun at a monster. He's no different than an animal, just murder him already. Without any hesitation, Yamamoto raised the barrel of his gun towards Kinzo and pulled the trigger. It grazed Ginzo Kinzo's right ear. If Yamamoto's aim had just been a bit just better, the bullet would have slammed into Kinzo's face. Not letting Yamamoto's momentary distraction go to waste, Beatrice lashed down and planted her right foot in Yamamoto's crotch. Good shot! After moaning in pain, a demonic expression flashed across Yamamoto's face and he stomped on her chest. Beatrice shut her eyes tight, hoping that she could withstand the coming pain. No one would want to have that their eyes open at the moment they've been shot. Could Yamamoto hear Kinzo's words until the end? In his last moments, Yamamoto seemed to grin. Then slowly, he fell backwards with a spurt of blood. Jesus! Kinzo! Beatrice tried to stand up, but then doubled over and started coughing. Beatrice, <laughs> これくらいで折れるほどイタリア女は山じゃないの。でもありがとう。あなたは命の恩人だわ。あなたが来なければ私はきっとそこに転がっていたわ。Yamamoto had shown no mercy. Her ribs were probably cracked. We didn't have the option of waiting possibly for several days for the ship that was coming. I made the decision to carry her away from this island. The man who kept yelling about preserving the secrecy of the base is lying there dead. The next island, the I next island over, Nijima, is close. A small boat should be able to take us there. この島には病院もあるのね。ない。隣の島へ船で運ぶ。君は病院へ。私はこの島での出来事をうまく片付けないと。とばっちりで。頼みがあるの。私を病院へ連れて行かないで。Why? Tashka 
私の帰るべき祖国はないのここが私の終点だからもう私はどこへも行きたくないの私に優しくしてくれたアンジェロ少尉もルーベンスもみんなみんな死んでしまっただから君までここで死ぬとイタリア女はヤワじゃないんだろ生きるんだねえ金蔵生きるってどういう意味あなたが教えてくれたはずよ生きるってのはただ息をすることじゃないわ私はイタリアへ帰りたくないのビーチあなたは私と出会うまで死んでいたと言ってくれたわでもそれは私も同じなの潜水艦の中で私祖国も滅びママも死んだパパもね私はこんな船沈んでしまえと願ったわだからここにたどり着いた時実は死に損ねたとがっかりしたその矢先よ少尉が英語がわかる者はいるかと騒ぎ出したのケンゾメンビアトリーチェイファンリーフォーガーバーダイン When Beatrice met Kinzo, she also forgot about dying. I was a soldier, 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 a s o 向かいの船が来るまでの数日間をあなたと一緒にいたいの胸の痛みなんて気にしないだって向かいの船に連れ去られたら私はもう死んでしまうのだからビトリシェイスポークデススマイリングソフトシェルベスト hide the pain in her chest お願い金蔵迎えが来るまでの数日間でいいから私をさらって<笑>その願いは叶えられない Looking apologetic, Kinzo lifted Beato up and gently sat her on the boat, in the boat. 育児なしやっぱり日本の男は軟弱だわ。そうだな私は育児なしだだから君の願いは片方しか叶えられない片方とは迎えが来るまでの数日間でいいからの方は叶えられないということさどういう意味君をさらうそっちを叶えることにした<笑>金蔵 There has to be a doctor on Nijima I'm wearing a navy uniform I should be able to pass myself off as a survivor of a boat carrying a VIP that was sunk by enemy ships If the doctor happens to be of the greedy sort all the better After all I have right here the golden magic to make people do what I say The witch from a distant country who took my lifeless body and gave me a soul. The woman who came to me with the gold revived me with her magic. Kimi wa. Majo da. Ogon no Majo da. Eh. Ogon no Majo yo. Minna to onaji recipe de tsukutte ni nani. Watashi dake ga pasta kara keshizumi o umidasu renki jutsu ga tsukaeru no. あなたと同じく私も
あなたがいてくれる限り生きることを許される屍あなたがいなくなったら私はすぐにでも死んでしまう死なせない本当に絶対にだってねだってあなたは私をさらったんだからそうですか金蔵さんがそこまで話しましたかではまさかあなたなのですか Wait, that's how I met you? おじいさまがベアトリーチを連れて行った新島の医者というのは驚くに値しねえ新島の医者って時点でピンとくる Oh my god Oh I didn't put two and two together、oh. 突然海軍の兵隊さんが外国人の女性を連れて現れたのです。驚きましたとも。My bad! <笑>しかもその上、軍機なので秘密で治療しろというのです。それがおじいさまとの初対面だったのですか ?My bad! そうです。それが金蔵さんと初めての対面でした。黄金で言いなりになった。欲深な医者ってのもお前のことなのか<笑> Part of me thinks that obviously he wasn't motivated by gold これは手厳しいですな<笑>突然外国人の女性患者を連れ込み軍機だから秘密にせよと言い治療代は必ず持ってくるから担保にと言って黄金のインゴットを差し出す相手ですぞ厄介事はごめんでしたしぶしぶとですとも確かにそれもそうですねでも南條先生はベアトリーチをかくまってくれたんですね金蔵さんほどではありませんが私にも英語の心得がありました二人の会話を漏れ聞き二人が決して厄介な何者かでないと確信したからです、うん、<笑>もちろんインゴットに目がくらまなかったといえば嘘がすぎますがな。At least you're being honest. 私も今よりは若かったものですから。その後、彼女はしばらくの療養の後、後ろ宮家の使いの方が来て、小田原に移すとおっしゃいましてな。引き取られていきました。おじいさまが自分で迎えに行ったわけではないのですか金蔵がどう六軒島の事件を言い訳したにせよしばらくの間は自由には動けなかっただろうよですな軍をごまかすのが金蔵さんの人生で一番の大勝負だったと言っておりましたが My bad ベアトリーチェは小田原に行ってそれから使われていない別荘の一つにかくまったと聞いています当時の金蔵さんにはもう家族がおられましたからなそこはうまくやられたのでしょうな、oh, I bet. クワドリアン以前から二重生活はお手のものだったというわけだ何してるんですか Did you actually just try to dodge the butt pinch? <laughs> 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 I don't know if that's true. 非常に振る舞われていたそうですがお気の毒なことですまさか亡くなったんですか驚くな金蔵はその娘を生まれ変わりと信じたんだぞいや心をないがしろにするんじゃねえ推理は可能だ
そそうですね失礼私は金蔵さんが彼女と過ごされた小田原の数年間を知りませんしかしその後の今日までの金蔵さんを見ればほんの数年間であっても彼がいかに彼女を深く愛したか伺い知ることができるでしょう She's practically the woman who basically saved him. So, this is so she, so no, Miss Mino Tamini Quadrian was good to you, Akeka. Kinzo Sama, Sensu Kan no Ogon Motodeni, Takumini Tachimari, Tachimachi no Uchini, Zai San or Kizuki Agate Kimashita. Mata, Mochimai no Ego Yoko Ikashi. GHQ に強いコネクションを作ってみるみるうちに大富豪となられたのですこの辺はリオンさんに説明する必要はありますまいええその莫大な財産で六軒島を買い取り屋敷を建てます小田原の親族たちは無人島を丸ごと買い取ったおじい様を水郷だと笑ったそうです10トンの黄金がポケットに収まる大きさだったなら金蔵も島を買わなかったろうよ。True. He hid the gold somewhere in Rokinjima. Built up a fortune with the ingots he'd taken out of it, and then bought up the whole treasure island. ですな。そして、後宮家の黄金伝説が始まるのです。インゴットには、片翼のわしが刻印されていたと聞くが。片翼のわし。というよりは、片翼に見えてしまうわしというべきでしょうな。んそれはどういう意味ですかヨーロッパに多いでしょう。翼を広げたわしを紋章にしたものは。サロ共和国の国旗にもわしが、いやいや、鷹でしたかな。ああ。が刻まれています。刻印が薄かった。あるいは。素雑だったということか。And that's what gave birth to the one winged eagle. Okay. そうです。戦時下の粗雑な刻印でした。本来は翼を広げたわしの紋章が刻印されるべきだったのでしょう。それがちょうど斜めに立ち切ったように、半分薄れて消えていたのです。Wow, so just a simple mistake like that gave birth to a very, well, I guess powerful symbol. 翼を広げたわしが半分消えてそれが片翼のわしに見えた金蔵は自分の運命を大きく変えたベアトリーチェの黄金に片翼のわしを見てそれを自分の紋章とすることを決めたに違いあるまい、wow. 果たして正しく刻印されていたならそれは共和国旗の鷹だったのかそれともまさか相当のいやいやそんなまさかあの莫大な黄金の山の前で金蔵さんと杯を傾け合いながら黄金ロマンで夜を明かすのはなかなかに楽しいことでした、so、wait a minute, you knew about the gold? もっとも金蔵さんはその刻印から黄金の出どころを探られることを嫌いましてな。Or maybe I just read that wrong. Gaibun ni mochida so ogon niwa, waza waza jibun no katayok no washi o design shita, bets no kokuin o uchina o shite ita yo desu ga. Ah, okay. Omae niwa miseru dake datta no ka, kinzo mo kechi da na. Muron, gai fugo ni natta ato, kinzo san wa futata bi watashi no moto e otozure, mi barai datta chiryo hi o shikari haratte kuremashita tomo. 治療費にはちょっと多すぎましたのでな。He was just being extremely generous for you. ちゃんとお釣りを払いましたが。<笑> okay, good on you, Nanjo. それ以来、おじい様と交流をそうです。金蔵さんは私が秘密を守ってベアトリーチェをかくまったことをことのほか深く感謝してくれましてな。おじい様は。かつての小田原の親族たちは欲深の嘘つきばかりだとおっしゃっていました。南條先生の義理がたさが嬉しかったに違いありません。Guy, 
おじい様のような方がどうしてあなたにだけは心を開いたのかわかる気がします私にも多少の異国趣味とチェスの趣味がありましてな金蔵さんとは以来息を統合しまして<笑>こうして細々としかし気づけば随分と Wouldn't mind liking to see what a young Nanjo looked like if we got young Kinzo. I'm not sure if you're going to be a young man. I'm not sure if you're going to be a young man. I'm not sure if you're going to be a young man. I'm not sure if you're going to be a young man. I'm not sure if you're going to be a young man. I'm not sure if you're going to be a young man. I'm not sure if you're going to be a young man. I'm not sure if you're going to be a young man. どうにも昔から肝が小さいものでしてなそんなことはね肝は十分に不定さそうでしょうかお世辞でも嬉しいですな<笑>政治じゃねえ<笑> For at least one whole year after Kinzo's death Nanjo had taken part in hiding the secret of that death Of course Nazi must have given him some hush money Still, there could be no doubt that he'd had enough guts to withstand the pressure from Kenzo's grandchildren for a long time without slipping up once. And I also slipped up by saying Kenzo's grandchildren, no, from Kenzo's children. Ah, you're a good guy. Of course. An incredibly good friend. And that's as good a place as any for me to go ahead and stop. Damn. That was. Powerful. I think that would be the correct word. So I need to get a good look at that. I never really did bother to look properly. That's your whole sprite. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Damn. So not only did we learn the origin of the one winged eagle, we also. Witnessed quite a really bad moment involving a lot of senseless, meaningless slaughter. Good God. That was horrible. Damn. But, um. I'm kind of glad it kind of did end there, though, because I still have, uh. Theory video to make. I don't know when it'll come out, but I'll try to get it out as soon as I possibly can, I promise. But, um. Basically, after I'm done with this, I need to immediately just go back and work on that. But anyway. <sighs> I'm kind of glad that I'm starting to understand Kenzo significantly more than I used to. Like, I thought he was just a raving. I thought he was just a raving freaking old man lunatic, but now I. I greatly understand him quite a lot now. So. Mm -hmm. You're a good guy back in the day. But anyway. That's where I'm going to end it, so thank you guys so much for watching, and. I will see you guys in the next video.